Welcome to Rascal Apiary. Today we're going to talk about public speaking and public speaking for North Carolina journeyman certification is one of the available credits you can do. It's a speak to a non beekeeping group and there's another credit for speak to a beekeeping group. Today we're going to focus on speaking to a non beekeeping group and then I'll throw in some tips at the end to speaking to a beekeeping group. So let's get into it. First impression when showing up to a non-beekeeping group, if that's at a school or if that's at a library or a museum, they have an expectation that you are going to look professional. If it's wearing a you know, nice shirt with collar, a tucked in uh, shirt with you know, tie, bow tie. If it's just a guy in a t-shirt or a girl in a t-shirt with beekeeping theme, Sometimes all of these are acceptable. What's not really expected is showing up in cut up jeans, um, just a regular t-shirt that maybe has profanity on it. Like we want to, we want to keep the idea of beekeeping fresh. We want to keep it safe. We want to keep it professional. And we just want the public to have a healthy eye on beekeeping. So appearance first. Try and make sure that you have some sort of attire on that either shows off your beekeeping club, shows off maybe your company, uh, if it's a beekeeping company, or just shows off that you're professional. Let's talk about your setup. So you get to whatever location it is, school, library, museum. I'm just going to use those, public area. and. You should have a table, put a tablecloth on it. If you have a tablecloth that has some sort of banner, that's even better, or hang a banner off the table that either shows off your company, your club, something that's beekeeping related. It could be a giant fact about bees. Next thing you wanna do is set up your table. What kind of things are you bringing? Well, it kind of depends who you're talking to. If you're talking to adults, they're not going to expect a whole bunch of toys on the table. They're going to want to see what you actually use. An extractor, a smoker, um, a beekeeping jacket, an observation hive, maybe even with bees in it. Children, they're going to kind of want to see the same thing, but they're going to want to touch it all. So keep that in mind too. But when you're setting up, make it look super awesome. Everything that you put on the table, Put a little card with it that says what it is or a sticker something that that gives them an idea so when they go to ask you a question instead of going what's this thing they can go what is the smoker used for and then you can really get into the subject or, or what's the hook here for you know you want to make the person asking the question seem intelligent too, and they can learn from what's on the table. The what's this thing or hey, what's that can be easily avoided by just having a little sign. When talking to the group, know your subject. Make sure you have, uh, what I do is 10 cards per uh, subject or like the easy one is 10 cards about queens, 10 cards about worker bees, 10 cards about drone bees, and have those facts. And if you're speaking to multiple groups, you'll be able to narrow your, your card amount down because you're going to start seeing that some facts you throw out, people are like, okay. Other facts you throw out, they're going to be like, really? I have questions. So the ones that they're like, okay, just kind of tuck away. And the ones that they have questions that gets the discussion going, leave those, talk about those. 
each time you have a card that has a fact on it, have a reference also listed on it. This one's called The Hive and the Honeybee. It's a very big book. It has a lot of knowledge in it. The reason I say that is because as you're saying these things and they start asking questions, if you start getting steered down a road that's uncharted territory, you can do two things. You can give them the resource, not the book, but you say, hey, I found it in Hive and the Honeybee. It's got a lot more information in there. If you want to check it out, cool. If not, here's my business card that has my contact. Give me a call. Send me an email. I'll research it. I'll write you back. Same thing goes if it's for your club. You can say, I really don't know the answer to that, but if you email the club and here's their email, it's on a sign, poster, banner, you can say, somebody there will answer your question in totality and you'll be very pleased. That way, you can please the person that's asking the question and you can move on to other people that have questions as well. You don't want to be stuck on one guy the or girl the entire time. So next, be excited about what you're presenting. I already talked about having the cards. I talked about the stand being set up. Make it look super professional. Make it look awesome, but digestible so that they can look at it and go, that's what this is, that's what this is. I have questions now that spawned real conversation. Be excited about talking about bees, answering the questions, always Try and say something along the lines, that's a very good question. Try not to do the old man, and I do this, I, I think I did this the first couple of times, actually. I was like, okay, that's, that's called a smoker. Like, that's not the way you, your body language wants to be, and that's not the way that you want to speak to somebody that could be getting into beekeeping, and maybe they don't even know it. They could be standing next to their wife, and their wife's like, I don't want to. And the husband's like, oh, I really like this idea. Let's do this. Or the opposite. The wife's like, hey, we're going to do this. And the husband's like, um, you're going to do this. Like, but you want to keep both of uh, whoever you're talking to engaged. And that's how we're going to keep the community aware of honeybees. That way they stop comparing them to wasps and other, you know, non-bees. Um. We want them to think it's safe, as safe as it can be, and fun. Fun's really important. Aware is really important. Uh, safe, give them some safe tips. You know, if you're going to get into your bees or you're around bees, you know, try not to wear dark clothing. Don't have perfume on. If you do, walk away. You know, if, if your child gets stung and is having a severe reaction, take them right to the hospital. Tips like that. But at the end of the day, it's okay for people to be scared. That's why I'm not really harping on safe because if somebody's scared and let's say you brought an observation hive and it has bees in it and you have a whole group and at the end, and this I'll cover, is you take the, the cloth off the, the, observation, the observation hive and you're like, if anybody wants to come up and find the queen, come on up. Now what... What I do with the observation hive is I leave it covered while I talk and then at the end I uncover it. I have the queen blocked off in the top and I always mark her so that kids, adults can come up, look for the queen and then point it out and then move along and let other people take a look. That, that's an interactive fun thing to kind of do because you'll start seeing eyes light up. But then you'll also look in the back and see people are like, nope, you guys go right ahead. Don't try and call them up. Don't try and make them less scared. It makes things worse. What actually helps is when a whole group is excited about coming up and looking at the bees and there's one or two that are scared, peer pressure alone will get them to be like, okay, if all these people can look and there's no bees getting out, like, it must be okay. So don't pressure people into doing what they don't want to do. Um, and always try and stay close to your items if you can. If you're at the stand and you have a smoker that's 10 feet away from you, there's a good chance a little kid's gonna grab it and walk away with it. Now, I've had them grab it before and puff and puff and puff, that's cool. I encourage that. 
puff away. But when they start walking away with things from the table, like you kind of got to chase it down. You don't want that. You want to keep it nice and secure. Your observation hive, keep it covered until you're ready to have people walk up. Once they've walked up, cover it again. You don't want people banging on the glass and you don't want multiple hands touching your observation hive. So I typically have a sign that says observation hive and one that says stand one foot back, you know, or half a foot. It kind of depends. If they're adults, you just say, please don't touch and they won't touch. If it's children, sometimes it's uncontrollable. You can see that they don't want to come up and bang on the glass or you tell them twice. Sometimes they're just going to do it. That's when you just say, hey, please move along, you know. It happens, but it it shows you that the kids are are getting used to them. You know, the more that they see bees, the better. And at the end of the day, when they grow up, they're going to be like, yeah, bees aren't that big of a deal. Wasps, on the other hand, hornets, on the other hand, yeah, we don't want to be around those. But bees are okay. Next, when you're talking about your subject, I already kind of covered know your subject. But articulate. That way everybody can hear you. We've had talks before where some of our other members are very quiet. And the people in the back are saying, hey, we can't hear you. Can you speak up? Now, the person that's talking may not even be shy. It's just they don't realize that they need to articulate and be boisterous. So sometimes it's just a slang or... A dialect that we have and it's confusing people or we're just not being loud enough so focus on trying to project all right thanks for watching and if you wouldn't mind just hit like subscribe and hit the bell for notifications so that you know when our next video is uh, some other videos to check out that we've we've put out and we're gonna start doing beekeeping facts on our Facebook and our Instagram. I think we're even going to post it on YouTube. So try and follow us on all those things and you're going to get a lot of knowledge for this winter. Uh, that's what winter's for. Winter's for first family, vacation, and then maybe while you're on vacation you can take a sneak peek at a Rascal Apiary video while you're flying or whatever it is you're doing, train ride. Maybe you read an article that, that we wrote. They're all really short. They don't take very long. And we also, shameless plug, we have a store. So if you want to buy a shirt that is beekeeping related for a presentation, we have them. Okay. All right. Ah.